holds lots of gold in this country. The old timers hit it pretty hard. You know, they found lots of large nuggets, but there's still a lot of fine gold as well because they didn't have water to run. And that's what Fred and Melinda are gonna be mining. Let's go help these guys out. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome. This is Brian, and this is my oldest son, Joshua. My wife, Melinda. Hey, hey Melinda. My daughter, Faith. My daughter, Aria. And this Hi, Aria. is little Richie. Hi, Richie. Ouch! Oh. <laughs> so what are your days like out here? Uh, hot. It's yeah. real hot. So the rattlesnakes love it. The scorpions love it. Hopefully they don't pay us a visit. <laughs> How long have you been mining here? He goes way back to almost six years with a pick and shovel and a little sluice. It's certainly been an evolution, what he's built in terms of, you know, trommels with using PVC pipe to, you know, now what we have. We've been mining with equipment for uh, just about the last seven months. Well, you're a bit above hobby stage now. Yeah. With COVID-19, I've lost my job and so we don't have any income coming in from my side. That made us realize how, how fragile our, mm -hmm. our situation was. I mean, we've done everything we know how to do, uh, so we, we really need your help. Because uh, right now, my hobby has to feed my family. I have to make this work. Mining started for us right here. This is Ari and Brian. They're running material. And there's Richie. He's providing moral support. Our first wash plant had a PVC frame, two five-gallon buckets with a screen wrapped around it. Hey, guys, are we going to find some gold? Yeah! All right. Hopefully. Hopefully. Our hobby mine has turned into something that we absolutely need now uh, because, uh, you know, our, our income situation has changed quite a bit. We've gotten to the point where it's, it's a do or die, honestly, you know. I, it's hard for me to talk about this because, you know, this COVID, everything has put, has turned my world upside down, turned our world upside down. Everything is on the line if this doesn't work out. This is our future. How much gold have you gotten out of the ground here? Uh, since, we, since we brought Seymour in, uh, just about a half an ounce a week. Worth less than $1,000 for a week's work covers the bills and buys McDonald's, and that's not enough. So who's Seymour? Seymour's the wash plant. Oh. The kids named it Seymour because we see more gold. Ah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want to get out of this? I want to be able to just support my family and run this till it's all gone. That's awesome, man. Well, let's do a, a day's run, whatever your day's run normally is. OK. And we'll pull the mats and see how much gold's in them. But while you're running, we're going to watch it run, and we'll decide on a few things you might be able to modify. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Well, let's fire up and see what Seymour can do. All right, let's fire it up, Ryan. To figure out what's wrong with their operation, Freddy wants to see it run for a full day and weigh out the gold. Once he's diagnosed the problems, he works with one to make the fixes. At the end of the week, they'll run a second test to see if they've increased the Dickinson's gold production. Well, that's pretty cool. One more power one. That's it. Use what you got. It's a great idea, honestly. It is. It's become our trademark. What'd you pay for Seymour? We gave $10,000 for it. It was worth that. Yeah, we hadn't paid it off yet, but uh, we're working on it. The Dickinsons work a 120-acre claim with a mix of fine gold and small flakes. 17-year-old Joshua loads pay dirt into the hopper, which feeds into an eight-foot-long trommel. A beat-up 420cc lawnmower spins the trommel, while jets of water blast the material, forcing gold particles into a 14-foot sluice box where they are trapped. Dirty water collects in the tailings pond and recirculates before it's pumped back into the plant. It died! Kill the water! I've got to turn this off. Ah, uh, crap. We lost another wheel. Ah. We have to tighten that lawnmower down really, really tight onto the barrel to get it to turn. But unfortunately, uh, it crushes the wheels on the bottom. Yeah, it's uh, junk. Yeah. We're going to have to take this apart, replace this wheel if we're going to keep running today. Fred has a spare wheel but it's a smaller diameter. It's gonna make everything goofy here, though. 
Yeah. It may it may shove your hopper on the other side into this. I wouldn't run it long term. You know, it's good for a few hours. It'll get me by for the rest of the day. Melinda doesn't like it when we're shut down because uh, we're not getting gold and that's never a good thing. So we won't tell her about this. All right, I think she's ready. Fire her up, buddy. All right. All right. Let's look at the discharge on your plant, Fred. We do lose quite a bit of water. Oh. Yeah, we're losing a ton of water out of that back end. Yeah, I drove it on the ground there. How much Probably a gallon there? a minute. Juan, you got your watch? Count for me. How long do you want? 30 seconds. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of material. And yeah. there's gold in the pan, too. That's unbelievable. I never would have imagined the gold could even come out there. Uh, my ponds are running really low. Your water is super silty. It's carrying oh, yeah, lots absolutely. and lots of silt there. Look at all the silt getting into the pump pond. Our entire system is a giant recirculation system. After we've run for a while, we start to see the silt build up. When it gets bad enough, we don't have enough water volume to continue to run. And we have to scoop the silt out. Every time we scoop that out, of course, we take a ton of water with us. There's no water source in the desert, so the Dickinsons have to recycle what they have. But as muddy water makes its way through the recirculation ponds, the silt doesn't settle and clogs the pump feeding water back to the plant. Probably one of the largest problems that we deal with. Our wash plants is capable of running 30 yards a day. Um, but because we spend a great deal of time dealing with this muck, we really only run right now about 10 yards a day. Because of their water issues, the Dickinson spend more time digging out silt than mining for gold. Where are you getting your water from? We actually have to truck our water in with a water truck oh. to okay. keep the ponds full. Okay. Well, this is your most precious thing besides the gold right here. Without this water, you don't get any precious gold. Absolutely. But well, we'll try to figure out some ways to help you out on that. That would be a game changer. Just five hours into the one-day test, the Dickinsons are forced to pull the plug. Gold gurus Freddie Dodge and Juan Ibarra want to turn the Dickinson family mine into a viable moneymaker. They start by weighing up how much gold they've found from a one-day test. Let's weigh it up. 0.16 ounces. Not that great, huh? No, it's not. That's what a kick in the teeth looks like, though. Yeah. <laughs> Gold at $1,900 per ounce. This half a day run gives the Dickinsons just over $300. We certainly can't afford to operate off of this much longer. This isn't going to cut it. Yeah. No. It covers the diesel and the water, but we couldn't even get a whole day test in, really, which is common for us because we, we silt it up. We just couldn't mm -hmm. keep running. One of our goals is to get your plant running longer hours. Yeah. Absolutely. That'd be fantastic. That's our goal. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Thank you guys so right, much. Right, Juan. Yep. Let's get him some more gold. So that's not enough. He's got a family to raise. You can't do that with 0.16. I'm hoping that in the next cleanup, that 0.16 is doubled or tripled, because that's where they need to be. Freddie and Juan have until the end of the week to overhaul the struggling mine. How attached are you to that lawnmower? <laughs> well, it's our trademark, but it's been a bit of a love-hate relationship. <laughs> We're going to do a different drive system for you completely. You won't have any downtime because of broken rollers. Wow, it's going to be more awesome. efficient. It's uh, You won't have to get up on the ladder to start it or anything. It'll be down here. It'll be easier. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. that's dangerous. Juan's going to make a longer key for you. So you <laughs> okay. Yeah. Off. We're going to put just... the switch down here for you. <laughs> yeah. Here. That's our big fix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boom in. 
That's the end of that, right? Yeah, that looks different without that lawnmower on top. Oh, yeah. It looks oh. better. I like it. It looks kind of professional. It, it does. Yeah. This is a little bit hillbilly-ish. We call that Southern Engineering. Next, Freddie and Juan crane off the 1,200-pound trommel barrel. The trommel barrel is the like the heart of the wash plant, so it's a bit like open heart surgery. But uh, luckily, we've got some of the best surgeons in the country here. There it is. That's it. It looks like a skeleton over there. This is the machine that literally gets gets us the gold that we need. And to see it come apart is very scary. The clock's ticking right now, and uh, I'm just hoping that we have enough time to get everything done. To help the Dickinson silt problem, master fabricator Juan Ibarra turns to his mobile plasma cutter. It's like a printer. You get a sheet of steel on it, and you can cut whatever design or any kind of piece that you want in two dimension out of a piece of steel. You can get everything programmed in, get it all cut out, and Fred and I can put it together. The sluice extension should help control the Dickinson silt problem. If we can cut down the silt, that means more runtime. If they can run longer, that means more gold. So ultimately, this fix is going to get them more gold. Every day, the Dickinsons have to shut down and clean out the silt, costing them up to five hours of runtime and a lot of gold. But Freddie has come up with a simple fix that should keep them running for a full day. It is cool. Here's our chute extension. So it's going to get your tailings and your silt farther away from your drainage ditch that goes back to your recirculating ponds. Take that end around that direction. You got it, Melinda? OK. OK, now we'll tuck it up underneath. OK, up. come up a little. Up, up, oh, right there. There we go. See how I narrowed it at the end? Yeah. To bring the velocities up on it so it pushes that water farther away from the plant. The old system allowed silty water to circulate all the way through to the feed pond. So it was still dirty when it was pumped back into the plant. Freddie's eight foot extension chute pushes water further into the tailings pond, allowing more time for silt to drop out before it can enter the recirculation channel. He's also added a pair of tarpaulin dams, which force any remaining silt to settle before it reaches the pump. Last bucket. All right, Josh, that's the last bucket, buddy. Nice job. It's the end of the second test. Instead of running for just five hours, Freddy's fixes have allowed the Dickinsons a full 10-hour run. Man, that's a good feeling. Now let's hope there's enough gold in the box. Yeah. We can do a lot of things, but we can't make gold. Right? Yeah. The Dickinsons can now run for twice as long, but have the modifications doubled their gold count? Look at that sucker. Oh. <laughs> There's your nice nugget. nugget. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that right there. Holy, come on. That's nice. This is the biggest gold nugget that we've seen as a family. And the fact that this gold nugget's coming out of our mining operation is just awesome. I'm just going to quick pan it. Maybe hey, there. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fine gold. I'd rather find the fine gold. That proves that your recoveries are working really well when you have that super fine gold. Yeah, Anybody can catch a nugget. I'm anxious to get this weighed up. It's been more than once that I've gone to her and my wife and said, hey, it looks like a really good run. And then we weigh it up, and it was, it was average or maybe a little bit good, but not quite as exciting as I thought. So you know, I really want to do better for her. That's, and for my kids, you know, I want to make this thing viable. On your first run, your water was so silty and mudded up, you had to shut down at a half a day. Yeah, that's all we could get, half a day run. During the test run, the Dickinsons recovered just 0.16 ounces. What will it be? There's 0.7. 
Yeah, yeah we just went past 0.77. One oh. One point one three. Wow. Yeah, that's 1.13 ounces in a day, guys. <laughs> that was awesome. That's the best run ever. That's incredible. That's awesome. Worth over $2,000. Freddie and Juan's fixes have doubled the Dickinson's run time and increased their gold by more than seven times. Increased our run time, increased our production. Yeah, and that's a that's and a lot of gold for one day. Yeah, and reliability. That's huh? ten thousand million. Yeah, it's <laughs> gold miner math. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that is. <laughs> Over a twelve month season, Freddie's fixes could net the family half a million dollars in gold. I need your help. That's why we're here. What are your main problems that you think you have? Probably our biggest issue is catching good gold. Our gold's very fine particle, and that's a real limiting factor for sure. I really haven't made a salary or any money. What's your background, Peter? <laughs> well, actually, my background is website development. Uh, I'm also a graphic designer. So you're a graphic designer? Yes, I am. OK. I've never helped a graphic designer gold miner before. So how much gold did you produce last year? Roughly around 20 ounces. In a six-month season, Peter only banked around $30,000 for a crew of four. What do you guys need to stay afloat out here per day in gold? $1,000 a day. The account is nearly empty. So, you know, the reality is if we can't make it work in the next couple weeks, it's done. There's your screen deck, huh? What's cool about this screen, it's a high frequency screen and it's designed to uh, vibrate at high frequencies and remove the fine particles. We're only after the fine particles here. Yep. We also added a centrifugal concentrator because in my research online, <laughs> uh, in textbooks, they're more efficient at concentrating fine gold particles. That's Sometimes. what the text If books they are. work. If they work. How does this work, Freddie? Well, there's a bowl inside that's spinning around, and it's got fine holes drilled in it. The water pressure on the outside of it injects water through those holes, so you're blowing your lighter material out and hopefully keeping your gold pinned against the side, right? So I'm hoping you can observe a centrifugal concentrator work effectively. Hope so. This is the tailing sluice for the concentrator. OK. Well, it looks like you definitely have spent some money out here. How much? A lot. A lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't uh, say I don't that. want to say on camera, no. no I don't blame it you. It looks like you got a lot on the line. Yeah, I'm screwed if this doesn't work. Can you fire it up so we can watch it? Of course. I got to get my guys hardcore miners. Yep. We'll fire it up and let you guys observe, and uh, I'll walk you through it while it's running. To save Peter's operation, Freddie and Juan will watch the plant run for a six-hour test. Then they'll weigh the gold. After they diagnose the problems and fix the operation, they'll conduct a second test run and hope to see a serious increase in Peter's final gold haul. So far, so good, huh, Fred? So far. All righty, let's get the gold. Dude, I have a weird noise up here. What the hell is he doing? Hey, that's not good. What's wrong? Pump went down. Got everything down. It's not working. Just 10 minutes into Freddy's test, the pump that feeds the gold concentrate to the bowl has failed. It's not even like budget. That's because it's jammed. Well, what the f can we do about it? Without that pump, this plant doesn't run. If we go to test it and run it the first time and it doesn't run, it's not a good sign. If Pete can't get his plant running, I mean, there's no way we can help him. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to have this happen in front of Freddie and Juan. Very unexpected. You know, it is what it is. 
Be nice to run a test, though, to see what their plant looks like and how much gold we could get. It's free. It's not jamming, so it's got to be electrical. You got a problem. Peter, I'm here. What's that? We uh, fried the ground. The ground? Fried the ground? Look, this was, look at it. Let's just double check the wires, because it could be a crap wiring job on myself, so. Do you wire these in yourself? Yeah, I did. Hasn't gone to ground. It could be just that wiring. Might have been a loose connection, Fred. How do those feel, Juan? Oh, like <laughs> Like <laughs> Let's redo it. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, Well, you can edit this out, right? But uh, it's kind of like working with a child sometimes. Peter's loose connections have cut the power supply to the pump. So you got to be careful. It's my fault, for sure. But I take full responsibility, guys. It happens. You know what? I... It happens. Yeah, let's redo them all. Let's try to fire this thing up, Fred. See what it does. Peter. Yes, what? Let's fire up the generator. Yes, sir. The motor's fine. It was just bad connection, so we got them taken care of. The good news is they're put back together. They're ready to run. Next morning, with the plant hemorrhaging gold, Freddie and Juan decide not to wait for the gold way before starting their fixes. We're, uh, we're kind of trying to go over what it's going to take to fix your plant. And we want to catch as much of it as we can in this little sluice box. New riffles and carpets. We need to flatten that sluice box out a couple degrees. Okay. Freddie and Juan have found three main problems with Peter's wash plant. First, the angle of the sluices has been set too steep Water is racing over the riffles, blasting gold out the end. Next, the sluice box isn't level, so gold and gravel are packing up on one side, blocking the riffles so the gold flows out over the top. Finally, Peter's gold is so fine, it floats on the surface of the water and is carried away into the tailings. We can increase your recovery for sure. You know, who knows what that number is, but, you know. But we guarantee yeah. we'll increase it. Yeah. Where I'm at right now, I'm $2,500 to $3,000 where I need to be for material on my end. Well, I appreciate it. You know what? This is game changer for the mine. I really need you guys here. I'll write you a check, and let's get going. Well, we'll get the materials, and when we're done, you can pay us. Let's do it. Thank we'll you, Make Freddy. it happen. Over at the gold room, Lance starts the slow process of separating the fine gold from the heavy sand. In order for me to get down to weighable gold, I need to do panning. This is very frustrating work, but this gold is so fine and like powder, this is the only way of getting to the final product. How's it going, Lance? Well, it's going slow, Freddy. This fine gold, I do a spoonful at a time. Wow. This is a very tedious process. Holy cow. One teaspoon at a time? You got a lot more patience than I do. For this little two and a half inches worth of material, it's probably going to take me about 20 hours. Cleaning up the gold by hand is highly inefficient, labor intensive, and runs the risk of losing gold. A 10% improvement in the sluice box isn't nearly enough to save Peter from going broke. So Freddie and Juan investigate to see where else the plant could be failing. Let's go look at those screens. Freddie starts at Peter's high-tech shaker deck. Juano! He's got 30 mesh screens in there, which is a mistake. Let's see how much stuff's not going through the screens, so just going right out with the tailings. Absolutely. If it's falling through, there's going to be gold falling off, too. 30 mesh means the screens have 30 holes per inch, a lot finer than normal. There may be a possibility that they're screening too fine. So by uh, looking at the tailings, we're going to be able to determine that. Fill that one up. We'll screen it into this one I want. There we go. To see if the tailings from the screens contain gold, Freddie tests a pan of the discarded dirt at the end of the shaker deck. You got 30 mesh screens in there, right? I do. OK. We just took this pan right off your tailings pile over there. All your gold's minus 30, right? That's correct.
There's probably 50 colors in there. Yeah. Holy cow. Right now, most of your gold is back out in the tailings pile. You've blinded your screen off to a point where you're kicking more of your pay off than is going to your sluices and to your bolt. A shaker deck washes the rocks and separates out gold and fine material that pass through mesh screens and on towards the sluices. Peter's screens are so fine, they're clogging with gravel, so the gold is washing away with the rocks into the waste pile. You never had a chance to catch your gold, whether it be in the bowl, the sluice, whatever. You're losing a lot, Peter. <sighs> mm. Well, this is not good news. That's yeah. the best news you could have heard this morning after the cleanup. If it wasn't for it all going off the end, you'd had three times as much gold possibly yesterday, right? You need to go to a bigger screen. Ay, ay, ay. Right? We're only here two more days, so, so we need it today. Switching to screens with bigger holes will allow the super fine gold through to be caught in the sluices. But sourcing them at such short notice is a big ask. Eric, this is Freddy Dodge. How are you today? Good, yeah. Do you carry any 12 mesh screens? Eight mesh? Maybe. OK. Maybe. I need two six-footers. And uh, is there any way you could make them today if we sent somebody that way? OK, I got to make sure I got that, Freddie. Give me a call, man. We're in a bind here, Eric. We've only got two more days here to help this guy. Give me some time, Freddie. So we can get him down. Please. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Bye. Bye. I know people. I know. I was going to say that. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry you've had some bad advice over the years, Peter. It's cost you a lot of money, a lot of money and a lot of time. It's, a, it's been a long road. How can you screen the 30 mesh, or you just don't do it? You all? don't do it. <laughs> right now, you're not getting half your gold to your sluice boxes or your blue bowl. Well, hopefully, we can get these screens in time. We don't even know if he has the right screens. Mm -hmm. So he may not be able to make it for us today. If not, we won't be able to fix it while we're here. OK. Well, as soon as you know, let me know. Freddy's home state supplier has come through with a custom set of bigger eight mesh screens in just 15 hours. How's it going, Fred? Doing all right, how are you? Thanks oh, for getting them, man. I tried my best to hurry. These guys are in a hornet's nest out here, Cameron. <laughs> Let's get yeah. these in there, huh? Well, Cameron, I'd love to hang around a all day, yep. but we got to go get these okay. in, man. Sounds good. See you later, bud. If you're mining, you got to get done. Back at the mine, Lance has to rip out the fine mesh screens that have been losing them gold. Right now, we're trying to unlodge it from the bracket that's holding it up top. I got all kinds of in the way, and I've got no room to deal with it, so it may not come out. Under it. From under it there. Out the other. Here it comes. Get out of the way. Stick that camera up your ass and get in here and help. We got to get those screens, and man, we're on another time. You ready to put some screens in, Peter? Freddie, that was quick. I can't believe how quick you got these screens. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Or both. <laughs> we got to get the different screens in there, or we may as well not fire this plant back up. Got it. Oh, nice. All right, we got her. See how plugged up it is? Yeah. He knocked a bunch of it out. Oh, yeah. It's a wonder any gold at all made it to the recovery system. See all the gray looking area? That's all rocks. It's plugged right solid. There's probably well over $1,000 a okay, screen. Peter spent a lot of money in a lot of the wrong places. Maybe if we get him where he realizes that simple is good. Maybe these guys will get ahead. Lance and Freddie run the gold concentrate across the new finishing table. 
It looks pretty good for a short run. I'm feeling apprehensive, nervous. Now, if this adds up to what we're hoping it will be, uh, we'll be killing it. So what are you guys hoping to see, double? At least. Last cleanup, Peter got a total of 0 0.27 ounces, worth $500. Only half of what he needs just to break even. So here's the bowl. Point, point four, 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 eight, four, nine, point five, five, one, five, two, five, three, five, seven, five, eight, five, nine, six, yeah. point six, six, yeah. Worth around $1,000. Peter's already above his break even point. That's anyway. in the bowl, right? That's yeah. just the bowl. That's a big improvement. Yeah. Wow. You guys remember how much gold was in the sluices last uh, time? Not much, 0 .06. 0 .06. Three. Well, 20, we're at 0 .23, 23 right now. 43, 44, 45, 47, 48, 6, 7, 0. 8, 0. 8, 0. 8, 8, 2, 8, 3. 0. 0. 0.84. 0.84 ounces. In the sluices. A combined total of 1.44 ounces, worth close to $3,000. Well, that's a hell of a lot better gold than that first test. From a quarter of an ounce to nearly an ounce and a half. Hey, Freddie. How How's you doing? Going, guys? Welcome. Thank you. Dave? Hey. Dave, and what's your name? Carrie. Carrie, nice, nice to meet you, Carrie. Hey, guys. That's Wilder. Nice How's to meet you. How's it going, Wilder? Wilder, how you doing? Ryder. Hello, Ryder. Nice to Jagger. Ryder. Jagger. Jagger. How you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. good. How about you? Good, thanks. So was this plant here when you got here? Yes, the plant was part of the previous mine operations. People have tried and failed, tried and failed. So I don't think it's configured correctly. But it was here, and then this is where it's been sitting for the best we can uh, tell, about 15 to 30 years even, right in this one spot. Right. Now you boys have been running it, right? Yes, sir. What kind of problems are you guys having with it right now? So we're getting too big of rocks going down the sluice boxes, and that's screwing up the screw, screwing up the bowl. Yeah. So that's a big problem. OK. Is the bowl catching any gold? All we found is one tiny piece. So you're seeing some gold then? Only 0.25 per 100. OK. That's all we're getting out here so far. Quarter of an ounce, 100 yards then. Yeah, not very good. Not yeah. very good at all. Yeah, that's pretty weak. How much have you guys got invested in this mine so far? In this operation, we're at about 35,000. Yeah. OK. Everything, moving everything, cost, yeah. everything else, huh? Yeah. Wow. So uh, we're here one week with you guys. So whatever we can do in a week to help you out, we'll do it. It's a good deal. Well, let's fire the plant up and look at it. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's fire it up, Wiley. OK. I'd say I've been a gold miner for about four weeks, but we've been looking at mines for about four years, trying to find the right one, and I think there's a lot of ground to be proven out here. We need to figure out what type of gold it is out here a little bit better so we can catch it better. After a four-year search, the Follett's found a 200-acre claim rich in mining history. It also came with a 50-year-old beat-up rusty trommel. We fired up the plant. We're going to run our first test for the day see what we get and see how Freddie can help us. Over the years, the Follett's plant has been modified by previous owners. A hopper feeder drops pay dirt into a 22-foot rotating trommel. The gold-bearing material runs down a pair of sluices and through a centrifugal bowl. Pretty dirty, on one. That's not very clean at all, Fred. No. First, Freddie and Juan checked the coarse tailings at the end of the trommel. See how dirty that is? There could be gold in it, so all this material, we want going down that fine gold sluice, right? Yes, sir. Right now, it's not. 23-year-old Jagger has spent the last three years working in his dad's construction company, building underground sewers. With gold prices at an all-time high, he convinced his dad to invest $35,000 in the claim and plant. We've invested quite a bit of money, but the education that they're getting, you can't learn that in college. It's the responsibility of a lifetime. I mean, 
if we don't pull it off out here, we can play out here for half a year and run out of money, and, and then what? We gotta go back to crawling in the sewer, but what does that do for my brothers? We don't get to spend as much time together. We don't get to learn and progress together. Yeah, if Freddie can help us get gold and we can make money out here, I think I got a, a career and a path set for the rest of the life. For years, Jagger and his younger brothers have been digging up their backyard, playing at being gold miners. We uh, started uh, panning and digging in our stream in the backyard. And then we started getting interested in gold mining. When I was a kid, I'd pan gold. My brother Rocky and myself started panning gold when I was like nine. We built our first gold wheel out of an old 55 gallon drum bottom and some gasket material when I was probably 17. We just did everything ourselves and we still work together. We work together well. Freddie continues his diagnosis by checking the sluices. These ripples, one, they take up half the sluice box. I'm feeling that. I feel how thin that moss is spread right here where my hand is. Yeah. This is old. Been out in the sun. I'm sure they don't have any carpet underneath it either, huh? But yeah, these are worthless ripples. Youngest son Ryder operates the 918 loader feeding the clay-rich pay into the hopper. It's cool working at a mine at a young age, because that's not something kids do these days, I guess. Over the next five hours, they run 50 more yards of dirt through the plant. So let's shut this plant down and go see if we can find better okay. stuff. Uh-oh, that's not good. Son of a Yeah. That's not good, Wano. Holy hell. Head's gone. Head's gone. Yep. We spent four years getting to this point. Yep. Head's gone, I want to. That sucks. Blew a head gasket on my pre-World War generator, man. Not too happy about it. After an abrupt end to their first test run, the Follets pull the mats to see how much gold they've recovered. What are we gonna do with those things? We gotta rinse them off yeah. or something. I like to have the sluice boxes wider and just have it so it's more of a fluid motion because the way we have it right now is we're, we gotta scrape this off, scrape this off, and hand stuff to each other, and you lose a lot in the, in the process of handing stuff around. Look at the amount of effort they're doing right now to clean that bowl out. Three people down there with coffee cans dumping water in. It takes about 20 minutes to get all the uh, concentrates out of the bowl. It's a little difficult just from the way it's set up. We've only seen a little bit of fine gold come out of this thing. This could take them half an hour just to clean that bowl out. Yeah. And, and honestly, it's not plumbed in right. It's not, Nothing's it's not right. worth keeping. Next, Jacker and his brothers clean up the concentrate. Luckily, we got Star Gold Panner Wild. They're here. You want me to feed you a little bit? Yeah, just throw some in here. Yeah. Our dad uh, has a lot of trust in us. He's investing a lot of money. And I kind of want to make my dad proud. That's all of it. Yeah. There's another pan somewhere. It's not real good, guys. Is that all of it right there? So we're not done yet, yeah, but I think your, that's most, most of it. Most of your gold will be in here, yeah. buddy. It will. That's not very good. No, it's, not. it's actually pretty bad. That's the bigger piece the boys have got so far today. A little bit of fine in there, but yeah, not nothing fine. to write home about. Pretty weak. Hey, Jagger. What's up, Freddy? Look underneath there. All right. If Freddy has set the sluice correctly, Jagger should be able to see the spiraling action in the riffles. Oh. Now, do you see what I was talking about? That's insane. Do you really see it cleaning itself out? Tell me when it really starts to dance, OK? Got it. One. 
one. Oh. As water and gold-bearing material flow down the sluices, the riffles create a vortex. By altering the angle of the adjustable sluice, Freddy can create a perfect deep vortex that washes away the light material and drives the heavier gold down into the carpets. How's that? You can see them swirling in each one like a vortex. Yep, that looks good. Awesome. You can see how that light material's all constantly going, right? Yes, sir. That's what we want. You know, if it wasn't doing that, then those ripples would just fill with sand, right? I've never seen anything like this before. What I just saw was not happening before at all. There was nowhere near. The water was fighting against itself. Now it's, it's a continuous rhythm. It's always working together, creating those vortexes. Running the trommel faster means the Follets have completed their 70-yard test in five hours instead of eight. Ran 70 yards. That's the test done. We're going to shut it down. Shutting it down. It's time to see if Freddie and Juan's fixes have delivered enough gold to turn this mining operation into a viable business. Let's have a look in the sluices, guys. We got some. <laughs> it's kind of looking like we got nuggets, but I don't know yet, man. It's a little muddy. It's crunch time as the Follett family check to see if Freddie's fixes have got them the gold they need. Hey, Ryder, come over here real quick. What do you see, bud? Holy Look at God. that. <laughs> Look at this one, guys. <laughs> what do you got, Ryder? Look at that. Half ounce nugget. Holy crap. <laughs> what? <laughs> no <Awesome>. way. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> Dang. Give Holy me that thing. <laughs> Jeez. What do you think, Wilder? That's pretty cool. I never found a nugget like that, and not not my first few years mining. Really? Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Jagger and his brothers need a drastically improved gold way to continue working together and fulfill their dreams of becoming gold miners. Well, let's clean it up, guys. You guys finish pulling the mats. I'll see you up top. Cool beans. See okay. you later. See you in a bit. Yeah. Shut that water off. They're picking nuggets out of the sluice box. If there was a script for it, you couldn't have wrote it better. I mean, they may actually have a, a place here where they can learn how to mine, and they can mine and they can make money. We'll know when we get the gold on the scale, but it looked pretty good in the sluice box. Let's not tell Dad until we get it on the scale. What do you guys think? Yeah. Let's take and hide this, <laughs> run all our cons and everything through the cube, and we'll keep playing it. You know, this has got to be exciting for the guys. This is their first real clean out uh, at their mine, so it's exciting times for them. From what I'm seeing here, it doesn't look horrible. You know, it doesn't look half bad. Yeah. I'm just hoping that uh, whatever the number is, it's enough for them to be able to stay here and keep on mining. How much gold do you guys need a day to make wages and make a little profit? We're going to need at least an ounce a day. Ounce? Well, if there's an ounce in this pan, you're doing over an ounce 100, because we ran 70 yards. Yeah. But we'll see. The scale doesn't lie. Before the fixes, the first test delivered less than a 30th of an ounce. If the gold doesn't improve, Dave won't see a return on his $35,000 investment, and the boy's dream of being gold miners is over. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. How's it look? It's looking all right. Whoa, that's <laughs> a lot better than last time. Yeah. Now I see why you guys haven't been telling me. <laughs> you guys want to get up here? Yeah, hop up, guys. Point seven two, Almost 3 quarters of an ounce, guys. Not quite an ounce. Nope. Worth over $1,300, but still short of their one ounce target. Well, should we put the uh, gold from the other sluice on? What? Yeah. <laughs> We're not done yet. You guys. What? <laughs> There's one. Wow. That is huge. 
Wow. Look at this one. Wow. Whoa. Wow. There's your big one right there. It's a nice nugget. That is Probably beautiful. Wow. 1.06. Wow. 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 Good really? job, guys. That's fantastic. With the addition of the nuggets, Freddie and Juan's fixes have delivered over 35 times what they got in the first test run. For the first time, the Follett family have met and exceeded their gold target and are making a profit. That's a big increase, huge increase. Yeah, that's only 3,000%. Wow, compared to the first one. <laughs> well, I'm proud of that. So am I. Oh, my. 1.06 ounces in five hours equates to around $4,000 a day. That's more than $600,000 over an eight-month season. If we can keep getting cleanouts like that every week, I think gold mining will be a career. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Wish we had more time with you guys. Thank you, Freddie. You're welcome. You're welcome. Can I join that too? Thank you. The look on Dave's face when he saw that gold hit the pan was, it was surprise, and it was, um, I think he was proud. He was proud that the boys had done this without him hovering over them. I've had more fun in the past few weeks of work than I've had in three whole years of working. It's been a blast being out here with my brothers, my old man, everyone's in a good mood. It's just, it's great. I'm never turning back. I'd gold mine the rest of my life. You know, uh, the Fallets are a great family. You know, they went from uh, having a a horrible cleanup to now they actually have a feasible mine. So I'm pretty excited for them. All in all, this is a win. You know, the first cleanup was three one hundredths of an ounce. And after we modified everything, we got over an ounce. Not only did we work on their equipment, we did lots of things here. Most of that, though, came from the cut, getting them on the right material so they're not running topsoil. I couldn't be happier with the outcome. Freddie and Juan are in Alaska on the Bering Sea. Just three miles west of Nome, they're en route to the Martinson's Gold Dredge, the Judy Ann. We aren't water creatures. Wash plants, we know in and out. <laughs> now, being on the water, working on a wash plant, a different story. The Martinsons, Judy and Doug, run a 200-ton floating platform of repurposed land mining equipment. It's part of a fleet of dredges that work Nome's offshore gold fields one of the largest in the world with a suspected two million ounces of gold. Well, we're here, huh? We're here. You want me to give you a hand, Fred? Boost up? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There, that's what I do. Ryan, I assume. Yes. Freddie, nice Freddy, to meet you. Freddie, nice to meet you. Son Ryan is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. Have you recovered much gold? Not enough to be in the black. What are your main problems that you think you have? This dredge is not making money for us. The six or seven years that we've been at this, building this 200-ton behemoth, it's been a long, hard pull. We put our whole retirement, we put our whole lives in this mining. Well over a million dollars into it. If we can't make this work, we'll be that we would sell it or scrap it. That's a tough one. This has to be productive, as you know. The gold is there. As hard as we tried to have the right equipment and do everything right. We need more help here so we can become efficient. I look forward to any positive change that we can make on this dredge, whether it's uh, fuel economy, recovery, runnability. And that's what we'll try to do. Well, we've only got one week with you, so we'll do what we can. We like gold, but we're, we don't have our sea legs quite yet. <laughs> I've been on boats on small boats, you know, on lakes and rivers, and you don't get the same feeling you get here. Nope. Like the whole world's moving oh, no. out, out from under you. <laughs> <laughs> we're on these spuds that enable us to dig with the excavator so we don't drag ourselves around the sea bottom. So when you feel that big jerk, that's the dredge hitting the spud and stopping us. This is like a car wreck. <laughs> Show us the boat. Give us the tour. So we're on the stern of the dredge now where the excavator sits. So he's digging the seabed, trying to scrape that layer of gravel that sits on top. They dig by feel. I guess you kind of just mine by braille. This guy does a great job. He's a natural. My name is Bryce Hardy. Uh, this is my first season mining. Running an excavator is actually pretty scary. Once the ocean starts 
getting a little rough in the white cappy, that's when we're high alert. Do you test your pay as you're bringing it up? We do. When we first roll onto a spot, we'll get a bucket and we'll fill a pan with a shovel, see what it's looking like. Okay. If it's worth sticking around for, we'll, yeah, we'll keep, keep on, on going. going. You want to do one? You want to do one, Fred? I'll do a test pan now. The pay dirt lies beneath 15 feet of salt water. Freddy's first test, investigate the gold in their pay dirt. They're never consistent. The gold that's on the Bering Sea is pretty fine. He'll set it right here on this deck cleat, right at good digging height. Perfect. OK. It's a little different panning here, Wano. It is. The Martinsons lease the mineral rights to 1,200 acres of offshore claims with inconsistent pay. I think that's a damn good pan. Yeah, that's a good pan. We're feeding with the excavator, and we're trying to high grade that layer of gravel that sits on top of that bedrock. That's a good indicator that we're on fresh ground. We get vegetation on the rocks. You can see the little barnacles growing on it. Doug's getting sick, but we got to get him off. I'm feeling a little bit of it. I'm nauseous, yeah, a little dizzy. Drink some of that water, Doug. Yeah, that'll help you. Sorry, honey. See in a little bit. He has to go because he's seasick. It's been a tragedy from the first time we took it out. Judy and I weren't expecting that I would be the one that gets seasick. I feel like I'm letting her down. Judy's been a real trooper and has stuck with me on it, even through some frustrations. Can we take a look at your sluices? The Martinsons feed sand rocks, and fine gold from the seabed into a hopper. Grizzly bars remove the larger rocks, and the remaining material drops down into a trommel. The rocks drop out the end, while the gold and fine material passes through into a tray and is pumped up to the sluice box where the gold settles. To catch any fine gold they've missed, the slurry then flows down a hose into the lower box known as the last chance sluice. Next, Freddie and Juan need to find out where the onboard wash plant could be losing gold. When you do a cleanup, you mainly just pull in this box for now? Yeah, we normally don't like to let it run any more than 24 or 30 hours on the upper box before we pull it. Being that it's in the ocean, getting slammed side to side, you got all your gold running down one side with most of the material and all your water running down the other side. The waves rock the sluices from side to side, making them much less efficient than a land-based system. Level sluices wash the best, but we can't stop the waves, but maybe we can lessen their effects. Yeah. So we got that sluice run up there. What's that corrugated pipe? What's it doing? Just dropping into the next sluice down so below? So that's our bypass to carry our tailings from the upper box down to our tail sluice. But if, like, if you pan it, you're going to find gold in it then? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we were losing a considerable amount of our fine gold. Gold in the last chance sluice is a sure sign that the plant needs fixing. So like if a person came in and modified some stuff up here so you didn't have to use that hose, it'd even give you more sluice links down here yeah. to catch fine gold. Anything we can put downstream of that is to the benefit. What do you think, Juan? Maybe add another piece of run here and then bring it down into this box. We got to make sure that we have an equal distribution up top. Do a nice V splitter in it. Yeah. Drop it into two sluices. Yep. Yeah, that'd be a good setup. We grab a tape measure and have a look. Let's do it. We want to make sure that they can run as long as they can, so we're not going to shut them down to do the repairs. So we're going to measure everything. And we're going to build it off site, so when they're ready to shut down, we can come in and bring the pieces that we built and put them on. Freddie and Juan have diagnosed how the dredge is losing gold and found a way to fix it with a new sluice and distribution system. Now, they need to set a bar for the Martinsons' gold recovery to find out if their fix works. So how long you been running for, guys? About 20 hours now. What do you think about shutting down or doing a cleanup? It'd be a good time to shut down and you know, clean it up and see what's there. You know, honestly, you guys' setup looks pretty decent, but uh, I'm, I'm really curious to see what you guys get. So that way we have a good starting point and a basis to, to see if our improvements make an improvement or not. Let's do it. Copy, Boogs? Yeah, I copy. Yeah, let's go ahead and shut down. You can make that your last bucket. Copy that. 
I'm just trying to figure out for our hose. We're 16 feet, right? We're 17, 18 feet. That sluice? We're two eight footers plus that extra foot on the end. Forgot about that. Where's it at? Middle of the step. Problem is, we added a drop box on the end of that sluice, which put us out another foot. We're eight inches longer than we can be. It'll be in the way of the stairs. If we cut that adapter down, we cut six and a half inches off that, right? Weld it to the face is going to be the fastest. We need to talk to Doug. Right now, we're 17.8 total, which is right here, right? Doug, we kind of got a little bit of up here. We made it a foot too long, but we're thinking to cut, we'll cut six and a half inches off of it, right? Which would be right here, right? We can live with that. You... We'll just slip past it. And... Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. OK. Uh, that's no problem. I hate up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it's right. hard with a boat, though, because some is out on the ocean. We've had worse problems than that. That's no big deal. That's one of the first things we learned was don't ever be too broad of anything you build, because it's probably going to get moved. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go cut the chute down really quick. Okay. Yep, we'll be right back. Yeah, we're getting ice on the water here, and, and we're, we're anxious to get out and get our last few days in. You know, Fred, we don't have the time for these kind of screw-ups. Got to get it done today. Freddy's solution to make the new sluice box fit, slice seven inches off its mount. We came in for this fit. Normally, we'd be out there mining still. So we're in a pretty big rush to get this box in and get it welded up and fitted and, and so we can get back out there and go mining. We're hoping to have this done by the end of the day. It's a race against time. It's a race against the weather. Let's weld this. The cut down mount welded in place, Freddie and Juan can finally install their new sluice and distribution box. Let's swing her in. Let the pit stop again. Come on down. Coming down. I don't think it's going to make it. We can go over this way a little bit, Fred. It's going to be close, Juan. And it's going to be tight, but I think we're a half inch. Easy, Fred. Easy. I, yeah. think, I think you got it. She is in, Doug. You excited? Yeah, I am. So we got the sluice in. With the new distribution and sluice box in position and only blocking part of the stairway, Freddie and Juan now just have to connect it to the last chance sluice. Uh, we're going to try to put the hose and the clamp on right now. Yeah, we can't damage this. They're hard to find and uh, can't go get one easily. you got to order it out of Anchorage in two or three days or more. Just uh, trying to get this hose on here. It's stiff. It's coming, Fred. She's closing up. She is going up. Oh, yeah, look at that, guys. That's a good fit. We got it in. Took a little bit of work, but uh, between all of us, we got it in. It's coming together, and we're going to go out armed and ready to go. And. Get some more gold. We're going to catch more gold in here and not lose it out the tail. Yeah, we're in a better place than we were a few hours ago. You know, we had one little glitch on a measurement here, but the sluice is in position. Everything looks good. Now we'll start working on their other sluices and hopefully get this boat back out to see where it's making gold. Cut one inch off the expanded. On all of them, right? Yep, cut an inch off. Their final task? Modify the dredge's top sluice box by installing Freddy's Goldilocks riffles. This should not only accelerate the dredge's cleanup time, but also help them trap more of the superfine gold. These riffles do really good, like mixing four or six foot of this in in like even a 25 foot box. Mm -hmm. I tested over about 250,000 tons and I had a 6% increase adding this in. Mm -hmm. It's just a little change. Yep. Hopefully it helps you catch more gold. A fine gold recovery system is just what we needed. There it is. Well, the sluice is done. It's awesome. installed. This V chute here is pretty short, but they, they work really good. As it goes down through there, it'll just level up, yep. and then you cut it right in half. You know, all in all, it ought to run good. Good. Looking forward to using it. I'm really thankful that we were able to go out and keep mining and didn't have to shut our operation down. All the fixes are in, and the dredge is ready to head back to sea. The sluice is in. All their other sluice boxes are modified, so 
It's about all we can do. We told them we'd get it done in one day, and we did it. It takes just two hours to get the upgraded dredge back to the claim, ready to start their second 20-hour test. We're on our normal mining ground, and we're ready to give her a shot and see what the, how the new box does. Let's fire it Let's up. Let's do it. OK, here we go, on the feeder. Rolling on the trommel. And slurry pump. Let's do this. Looks good, man. Looks really good. Coming down, coming into the box. It's feeding down equally down our distribution. The v shoots doing his job perfectly. It's coming down equally, going into the new sluice run. It looks really good. Really excited about the box spread belt. Spread in one. We did lose a day of running. I'm hopeful that we'll make that up in better recovery and recovery into the future. It's kind of like an investment. We had to lose a day to uh, gain better recovery over a longer period of time. So at the end of the day, it should be worth it. In 20 hours, they'll find out if Freddie and Juan's fixes will get the Martinsons the gold they need to take them into profit. You want me to weigh it up, or do you want to weigh it up? You did it the last time. You might have the lucky touch. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. 1.5. That's, oh, that's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Before the fixes, the gold weigh was 5.46 ounces. 5.870. Worth over $11,000. Almost a half an ounce more. So that's wow. 7 or 8%. Wow. That's good. That's so, wonderful. Yeah, eight or nine hundred a day increase in extra gold. There you go. Wow. Yeah, go. and if you save another hour changing your sluice boxes, there's another five hundred dollars a day just by being able to change those sluice boxes faster. Yes. The faster cleanups and improved recovery ups the daily gold tally by over fourteen hundred dollars. In the course of a season, the upgraded dredge could now get nearly half a million dollars in gold. If you get another eight or nine thousand dollars a week, a lot of businesses that's the profit. That's a big number. That's right. That is. You know that's mm -hmm. big. You know if you can run seven weeks in a season, you know so, with your weather and stuff. Yeah. Tell you what, that that should be yours and Juan's for helping us. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are you sure? Of course. You guys yes. have costs that you have to take. You care guys of worked and, really, and, uh, really hard. We we like to make it right. <laughs> <laughs> I get to hug you again. <laughs> No problem, Judy. <laughs> You're very welcome.